Now, a function that doesn't take any values, or what we're going to call parameters, has a limited functionality. Where functions become really powerful is when we can pass in information to it, and every time we call a function, get a different value or a different result from calling that function. So we're going to look at how we're going to pass a value into a function. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to define our function. Just like before, we gave it a name, in this case, square it. And we want to pass a value into square it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a parameter. A parameter is actually a variable that we're going to create that you can pass values into and start using it inside of that function. Python makes it really easy. Just like with other variables, all we have to do is define its name. So I'm going to pick num and close my parentheses. Put a colon. Inside of this, I'm going to print the square of this number. Now, inside my main Python application, I'm going to say square it, and I'm going to give it a couple of values and save this. This is what becomes so powerful, is I don't have to just call this function one time, and it only give me one result. Because I'm passing different values into my function, I'm going to get different printout statements each time I call this. I'm going to switch back to my console window. I'm going to call functions3. You'll notice that I get three different print lines, each one in regarding to what value did I pass into my square function. So being able to pass a parameter into a function allows me a lot of value. Now the value that's passed into a function is actually called an argument. You might say, well, I thought it was called a parameter, and you're correct. A parameter is in our function definition. It's what the function receives. An argument is what we pass to our function. So it's the same thing. It's just which side of the coin are you looking at it from, essentially. We're going to modify this just slightly. I want to show what happens when we pass a value as a variable. I'm going to have num1 is going to equal input. And I'm going to wrap this inside of an int because we want to make sure it's still an integer value. Now I'm going to call square it and pass in num1. Num1 is going to be a value that's entered by the user. Once I'm done saving, I'm going to switch back to my console window, run my file again. It gives me 256, the square of 16. I can run this again. And each time I type in a number, it's going to give me a different value based upon the number that I enter in. So when we pass our argument to our function, that value can be either a fixed value or it could be a variable from input from a user, a file, or some other source as well. Now, let's look at another example. In this example, we're going to pass multiple arguments. So we're going to need to set up the parameter list to actually be a list of parameters. It's very easy. We're going to print the last name, and then the first name. And so we're going to need to take the first name and we're going to need to take the last name. So I have a variable called first and a variable called last. Inside of here, I'm going to say print. Inside my print command, I'm going to say last plus, this is going to be our concatenation. I'm going to concatenate a comma and then first. And here what I'm going to do is I'm going to get those two values. Fn for first name. Then I'm going to call my function. And I'm going to pass my variables, Fn and Ln. Now, two important things. I can only pass the same number of arguments to a function that the function has for parameters. So if my function definition has two parameters, I can pass two arguments. If my function has one parameter, I cannot pass two arguments because it's going to cause an error. Likewise, if I have three parameters, I cannot pass only two by default. There is an example where we can get around that, and I will show you that in just a minute. 
You'll see that my arguments need to be in the same order that they'll be received. This is sometimes referred to as positional order. Switch back to my console and call my functions for file. Please enter first name, Bob Smith. And you'll know it prints out Smith comma Bob. So it took my two values, looked at them in the correct positional order, swapped them as was requested in the print statement when we concatenated our string together, and printed out that concatenated string to our screen. I can have as few as no parameters to my function definition to as many as I want. Now, realistically, I should probably keep this to a small number. The more function parameters I take, the more possible confusion and errors can arise when I'm calling my function. Now, I mentioned that I might have three parameters, but only need to pass in two. Let's look at an example of that. Let's say I want to take in a middle name, but I didn't know if it would always occur. So I can say middle name equals, and then give it a value. In this case, nothing. You might say, well, what's the point of that? So this is a default value. If middle is not passed in, we're not going to get an error because it's going to have a value to work with. Depending upon our function, this could be numeric data, it could be a string, or in this case, an empty string that has no information. I'm going to save this real quick. I'm going to switch to my console, run it again. You notice no change. It did not give me an error. Whether my variable is used or not used doesn't matter. What matters is the fact that I have a default value so I can see it if it does exist.